Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and this is month six of my Birds of a Feather Quilt Along. It's a mystery sampler I'm doing this year, and it's based on Fat Quarter Shop Solid of the Month, even though you don't need to use that, but that's how I'm basing mine. Um, it's a Fat Quarter Club that I'm a part of, and this year's Fat Quarter Club theme is Birds of America. And so I kind of ran with that and I'm doing my own mystery quilt along where I'm doing bird named blocks every month. So this month our colors, if you can't figure it out, are flamingo. And I don't work with a lot of pink so I wasn't too sure about this block. But um, I think it turned out really pretty. And the name of the block is called Crow's Feet. So it's a bird named block with bird color themes. Anyway, I um, provide the pattern for you in my free resource library. I have a link to that down below. If you want to do this with us, you don't have to be a part of their club um, to get your own Birds of a Feather uh, mystery sampler quilt in the end, at the end of this year. So, I am going to walk you through a tutorial of how to put this uh, block together. It's not a hard block to put together, but when you have 12 colors like I do, it makes it a little bit more challenging to keep track of which colors go where because it's hard to see, but this strip right here with these triangles is different color than this strip right here. So that makes all these half square triangles a little different and the flying geese a little different. But I walk you through how I do my numbering system and uh, keep track of it and show you how in the end how it all comes together. So, I also am redoing, not redoing, revisiting, I don't think that's the word either, just a refresher of my sashing, if you're going to do the sashing like I'm going to do it. So I'm just doing a refresher of the sashing at the end if you want to watch how to do that also. That's not very hard either, but it makes for a very stunning sashing with these squares or diamonds or whatever you want to call it in between. So these are my first five months up here. I've got blue jay, hummingbird, goldfinch, green parakeet, chickadee, and now I have flamingo. So check out the link below if you want to see all the blocks that we've done before. They are in my free resource library for you to download and catch up and do this with us. Or if you're doing it with us, you can go grab this pattern and uh, come along and have a beautiful flamingo bird block in the end. Um, yeah, can you tell I'm really happy with this block? It, uh, it was fun to put together. I really like how this block lent itself to the colors. I could kind of, even though I had 12 colors, I could reuse the colors in places for a little bit of symmetry. So I'm really happy with it. Anyway, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You can watch me put this together all year. I've got a lot of other fun stuff going on on the channel also. Um, you can grab this pattern and uh, we'll have some fun. Anyway, let's get started on our June Flamingo Crow's Feet block. Real quick, that's where it's going to fit into my quilt. So we're halfway done with the quilt. You can get this pattern and other patterns at our library access page at canaryquilts.com. Click on the library access and it will take you to the page where you can sign up and get the password to get into the free resource library or you can click there if you have the password. Enter the library and you can type in the password at this time and it will give you access to all our free patterns that we have up there. This pattern and other patterns are available on this website for you to download. Thank you very much for watching this video. All right, we are on block number six, June of my Birds of a Feather Mystery Quilt Along. It's a sampler quilt along that I'm doing this year. I'm using the Solid Fat Quarter Shop Solid of the Month Club as my guide for this, but you don't have to use that. You can grab your own colors. And this month we have Crow's Feet as our bird named block. And it's kind of cool. It looks like it has arrows pointing towards the middle there. I'm not sure how they get crow's feet out of this, but I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take it. So what I did first was I cut by number. And mine are numbered by their um, guide here. So the lightest color is 1. This is 12. And I have this in the back of the pattern. So you kind of know where I got my numbers from. 
Um, <clears throat> so I've done my cuts per number at the moment. So then I'm going to separate them out and put them by letter also. But that's the first thing I did. So each one of these, like this 10 has three different cuts. Um, eight has these cuts. So I need to separate those out, but I just did it by color first. So out of all of our cuts, A through E, C is the only one that needs to be subcut. And that just needs to be cut on the diagonal. So let's see, fabric eight and seven, nine through 12. So these right here, all have a C in them. So I'll pull those out first and I'm gonna cut those on the diagonal and then put them with my letter C. So I know for instance seven, I need two C's that are two and three eighths inch. So these are the two that are, um, are gonna get subcut. So then I'll have four triangles. I was gonna do half square triangles, but then we'd have like extra half square triangles. So I'm cutting these in half and we'll put them together that way to minimize the waste of fabric as much as we can. Okay, there's C and that's seven. What one's this? That one is E. So C7. And I think I'm going to have to get some paper and do um, some markings. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. Only our C's are the ones that are going to get subcut like that. All right, I've got my pieces separated out by letter now, and in front of each color I have a number letting me know which, no, it's hard to see, which number it is. You can kind of see my alphabet in there. Um, where I didn't have alphabeties, I used paper. So I can now go to my A and find whatever number I need. It's labeled. So what we have here is A is all these big patches you see here. So there's nine of those. B is the four patches right here and out here on the edges. C is gonna be all these little half square triangles you see here, right in here. We'll put those together by number. D is the base of this flying geese right here. There's four of them. And then E are the corners of the flying geese. So it's actually, it looks like a lot there. It's actually pretty simple breakdown. Um, we just have to keep track of our fabric numbers so we can get them in the, um, basically in the colors that I want in this block. So we are going to start with our half square triangles. We can push these. We're going to need all of our C's. I'm going to set these aside by number. Okay, I've got in my pattern how these need to go. So we need a 12 with a 7 and an 8. Like this. I'm going to keep my 12 here. We need a 9 and a 7 and a 9 and an 8. So these are all going to get paired with our 7s and 8s. We are just going to sew these together right along this long edge and then iron towards the darker color and then we can trim up our tails. So. Not too hard, just keep track of your numbers and what colors are going together. But seven and eight are going to get dispersed out to each color here. The nine, 10, 11, 12. Just want to show you real quick that I did two at a time and kept the number with the two that it corresponds to. So I can kind of keep track of those as I'm going. All right, there's my half square triangles. I have left the number and it's the darker color number on each of these pairs. 
Um, you can see seven and eight are so close in color that I'm going to have to refer back to my fabrics when I'm ready, when I need to know when seven and eight go into a certain spot. So, all right, so that's where I'm going to mark my seven and my eight, which is the lighter color on here, so that when I need to know where to put those, they'll be marked on the back. So that's how I'm doing it. And then the darker color is my 12. All right. All right, there's my half square triangles. Now I'm gonna take the number five fabrics out of my B pile, and we're gonna add them to our half square triangles, but you have to really keep track of the order that we're doing this. So let's start with number 10, and we need our 10 in the corner and our eight like this like that and seven is down here so you need to know because it makes a difference how your number five is going to go on so that's how you need to do it you need to keep track of your seven and eight and which way it's oriented per my pattern and then add your number five to that side so i'm going to do that and i'm going to pin the side i want to sew And put my number 10 back on there. Just put it right here. Okay. Other than that, we're just going to sew along the side we marked and iron towards our number 5 patch there. Alright, so what we just built over here are these pieces right here on the edges. So I'm going to set these aside and we can now move on to some flying geese. To start our flying geese, we need our D pieces and we need our E pieces. And our E's have these, you know, sevens and eights again, which are so close in color. But as long as we get them on the right sides of these pieces, will be good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick, like I'll pick seven and I'll get it on the correct side of these and then we will uh, just be able to put eight on the other side. So what we need to do is mark the back of these with a diagonal line. All right, I have my, the back of my sevens marked on the diagonal. So I'm going to take my D's and start with nine. I'm going to put them in two different piles. My 10's going to be here. My 11's going to be on the left and 12's going to be over here. This is all in the pattern. And my sevens for nine and 11 are going to be on the left side. Let's do it. What I'm pointing down, want it going like that. And then for 10 and 12, is going to be on the right side. So, sew on the line, trim a quarter of an inch from your seam, iron your um, towards the corner. So then when we come back and we do eight, we know exactly where they go. So I'm going to get these done, keeping track of which numbers are which. All right, here's my seven put onto the corners in the right spots. I've already marked the back of my eights, and all we have to do now is just put these on the other side. Still going to keep track of my numbers, which is the base. Um, so, same thing here. Sew on the line, trim a quarter of an inch from the seam, and iron towards the corner. All right, here's my flying geese. Kept the numbers on the bases here. So we need to bring in what we did before, um, our half square triangle on our patch. And then we're gonna have some of our A's. We're gonna start putting together our rows. And we need six, we don't need four, three, two, one, not 12, 11, 
and that 10 and 9. All right, I'm going to put these back here. Okay, I've set my A's that I'm not using up here, and we are going to be, let me show you, we're going to be building these right here. And then these with the um, flying goose. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're just starting to put these pieces together so we have less to put together in the row. So, number nine and number 11 are going to get flying geese. Number 11 gets the 11 flying goose. And it's going to go just like that. And number nine gets the number nine flying goose. Just like that. So that's pretty easy. We'll put these together, get these ready to sew. And I'm just going to keep the number nine right on there. Put together 11. Okay, nine and 11 are ready to sew. 10 and 12 are going to go aside for now. Don't need those anymore. Now, let's lay our one, two, three and six and we need a 12 and seven which is this one with our number one put that aside we need a 10 and an eight so there's my 10 that's my eight like this. Put that aside. Oh, no, we need that one. 10 and 7 is going to go like this with number 3. And then 12, oh, the other 12 and 8. Okay. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. It's a fun puzzle, though. 12 and 8 are going to go like this. So we'll get these ready to sew. Remember I marked my 7s and 8s on the back here. We'll get these ready to sew. I'm just going to put the number 1 here. Make sure we get, uh, I guess it doesn't matter which side at this point, but I'm just one of those visual people. All right, I'm going to set these up here, and I'm going to get all of these sewn, and in all the cases, we are sewing towards the large A piece. Or not sewing towards, ironing towards. Oh, I haven't done that in a while, I don't think. All right, there's the pieces I just finished. So from here on out, we can start building our rows and we're going to build this row here and then the skinny row and then the middle skinny and the far right. So let's start over here on this side. On the left side we need number one. I'm going to put that right there. Just kind of set my pieces aside. Then we need our number 12 A. And then we need our number six. And you can see that these two colors match this one. So that's good. That's good. We did it correctly. <laughs> so we're going to sew these together, these three together, and we're going to iron this to, towards 12 and iron six towards 12. And then our far left will be done. So I'm going to get that done. All right, there's my first row right here. I think what I'm going to do is build the three big rows, and then I'll build the two skinny rows. So let's build this middle row right here. So we need two. We need ten up here.
And then we need three. And these colors match this color. Woo wee! Uh, let's leave them three. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Iron these together, sew these together, iron towards 10 or A, which however you're referring to it. All right, I built the far right row. Now we need to build that middle big row. So we need 11 and 9, and 11's gonna go up here, and 9's gonna go down here. And in the middle is gonna be 4. And that gets rid of all, oops, I need the four because that's how I'm keeping track of things. I'm keeping track of things by the middle piece right here. So again, sew these together and iron towards that middle piece. All right, there's my three big rows in the block and I'm just keeping track of them by the uh, middle numbered fabric, but the flying geese kind of give it away. But anyway, just in case, I'm going to set these aside. Now we're going to do our skinny rows that go in between those. So we're going to need to work with these. Well, everything up here for sure. And we need 11 and 7. Which is that right there and it goes just like this. And our 11 and 8 goes in the other row. So we can build both rows at the same time. Then we're going to pull out our number, four, our, yeah, our number 4 B pieces. And they're just going to go right here. Then we've got flying geese. And 12 goes over here with the point going this way. And 10 goes over here with the point going this way. Next, we've got this B number four, the patch. And then our number nines. And it's going to be just like this. Seven goes over here, eight goes over here. We're going to put these together and always iron towards the patch right here. Pretty simple. I think I don't think I need to mark these because these colors are going to tell me where they go over here. All right, goodness gracious. So I'm going to get all of these sewn together and just iron towards these patches right there. All right, here's the two skinny rows that I just did all iron towards these two patches. So let's start putting this back or put it together. Uh, let's see, this goes in the middle, and this goes over here. So if we squish it all together, you can kind of see all of the colors are starting to come together. This arrow, these arrows all match. It is hard to tell the difference between 7 and 8, but um, I think this is 8. These colors all run this way, and this is seven, and these colors all run this way. And then five and four are different colors, so five is all the way around the edges, and then four is this, are these pieces on the inside. So the only seams, well, we have to match these seams right here. Those are the seams we have to match when we put this together, and they are all nested. So that'll be good. And we are always going to iron towards the larger of the rows. So as you're putting this together, just iron towards these large rows. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Match your seams in here and iron towards the large rows. So when I come back, my block will be done. It's going to be pretty. It's really pretty. There we go. There's our flamingo crow's feet block for June. That turned out really pretty. I'm really happy with that. I was a little worried about all the pinks. Um, it took me a little while to lay this out so that I could get a balance of colors using 12 different colors. Um, but I liked how actually even though 7 and 8 were hard to figure out where to put them, they kind of blend and look like the same color in this X in the middle. 
So, I mean, even four and five almost look identical colors. A lot more than what the colors I picked out for that picture right there. So, and the arrows really stand out. I really like it. It's turned out really pretty. So, thank you very much for following along with me on this journey. Let me know if you're doing this. I am next going to do another short tutorial on the sashing. I did it in January. I'm going to do it in June. Um, just a refresher or if you're new here and you want to watch it. All right, real quick refresher on the sashing. We need to make two shorts and two longs. Um, these pink pieces are just cut from a square. You cut a square out and then you cut it on the diagonal both ways so you get these triangles and there will be two triangles from each color that you won't use depending on how you want to do it. You can do all one color in these if you want. I've opted for two colors. Now this one is hard to see that there's a difference but when you do put them next to each other you can see a difference. <laughs> But anyway, it's all in the instructions um, how to cut these triangles out. It's really simple. Then we need, so we need two short, two long, and I've done one of each to show you what they look like. So I've kept the color I need with the short because I want them on opposite ends in the long. And I have two pieces here. And I have SX Linen, which is... Um, it doesn't have a front and back. So if you have a front and back, you need to cut one side this way and one side, one of them this way. But since I don't have a front and a back, I'm just going to put my 45 degree line right along the bottom of my strip and then cut from the corner up. And that gives me my two pieces that my triangle will fit into. So I'm going to get the long one cut also. Just remember, if you have a front and a back, you need to um, cut one on this side and cut the other piece on that side. 45 degree angle is on the bottom of my strip, and I'm going to cut that corner off. So I have, these are put together exactly the same way. One's just longer than the other. Fits right in there. All right. So what we want to do now is make sure we got, like, this is going to be how it sits. So I need to mark a quarter of an inch at the top of my point on this angular edge. So let's go over to my board here, and I'm just going to come over, and I'm going to put a mark at one quarter of an inch. And I need to do it on this side. And there's easier ways probably to do this, but this is how I do it because it's right by my machine. So there we go. The long one is going to be exactly the same way. It just has longer edges. So take the right side of your triangle, turn it over so we have right sides together. The marks are on the right sides. Line the top of your triangle up with that mark you made. And then we are going to go over and we're going to sew this on and then we're going to iron towards our strip, not the triangle. All right, I've got it sewn on. I've ironed towards the strip and you can see that I have a pretty straight line right here. So now we need to line it up with that quarter inch mark. Let's just turn everything over. What I'm going to do is I'm looking at my pink triangle and I'm going to Make sure that the top point of my triangle is lined up with that mark. And I'm going to sew this on and iron it towards this strip right here. There we go. So we have a nice straight line down here. We've got um, some tails we need to cut off up here, which gives us a quarter inch before the point of our triangle. So the long one's going to be put together exactly the same way. And I'm going to put this together, and then I'm going to show you how I put it on the block. All right, here's my flamingo block. And here's my strips finished. We're going to start with the short strips. And they will be longer than your block, and I did do it that way. Because, I, because of these edges here, I like to be able to trim it up on my edge here. So I need to find the center. 
Yep, I think I want it on that color. Let's fold this in half and find the center of our block. Crease it and I will mark it. And then I'm going to fold this so that my seams, actually I don't need to. What am I thinking? The point. Our point is going to line up with that mark. So take your point and just push it up so it lines up with that mark. And then line up your edges. We're going to sew these. And I have been ironing towards the block. And we can put the other side on exactly the same way. All right, there's my sashing put on, and you can see we're over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to take this, my little ruler, I'm going to push it up to the edge, and I'm going to line it up with my block. And then trim it off. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. to put the long sashing on it's exactly the same way let's take our block and line these two seams up crease that center these are the seams I'm lining up I'm gonna mark that center so I can see it pretty good and turn it over so that my point and it's this point, remember, right there where our seams meet, that I want to line up with that mark. And then line up our edges, sew it on, iron towards the sashing, and then we'll come back and trim these also. There's my long edges put on. I'm going to trim these up. Again, line my ruler along this up to the edge and trim off that excess. Let's come down here. Oh, that's another little quick tutorial on how I'm doing my sashings. I don't know if you're doing them that way, but that's how I'm doing them. All these um, triangles will line up with the other sashings of my block, kind of form a square right here, or diamond, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I think it's going to look really pretty in the end. Um, so, gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm really surprised. I wasn't too sure about the pink flamingos. I love flamingos. I love their coloring, but I'm not particularly a person who works with a lot of pink in my fabrics. And I just think that with the colors being so close to each other, I feel like this design did really well with these arrows. Um, and it lent itself to be able to reuse colors like on the edges here and in the center block and along this strip and this strip. So I'm really glad. I'm really happy with this block. I'm, I really, really am. It's really pretty. Let me know if you're doing it. Let me know how it's going for you. And um, I love doing this block. I love doing this video. Hit the subscribe button notification bell. You'll see me do all the blocks. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.